Okay, we're back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Neely Fam channel. Um, it's been a minute. I always say I'm gonna be consistent on YouTube and then I don't. I need someone to hold me accountable. But this is hopefully the beginning of lots of videos because we are going to start IVF. I am so nervous, but I'm also a little bit excited because we're going to a brand new clinic. We're starting this process like completely over, which sucks, but at the same time is kind of exciting. So if you're new here, two and a half years ago, I did IVF for the first time. So I'll tell you a little bit about that and what happens. So we did IVF to get Harlow, obviously. So I'll just kind of tell you about our journey. We started in January of 2020, met with our doctor. Um, I went to Utah Fertility Center and basically chose the only doctor that was open at the time because we were just kind of like, let's get this done. I didn't think to like choose a specific doctor. I was just like, you know what? This guy's open. This fertility clinic has good reviews. Like, let's do it. Um, so we started the process. I started with like a bunch of blood work, checking everything to make sure all my hormone levels were good and all that great stuff. And then I did a couple ultrasounds. One of them was a saline ultrasound where they basically shoot up a bunch of water into your uterus and look around, great times. The girl who did it, like you have your legs up in holsters and she literally has a headlamp on like all up in your business. So I got very comfortable very quick, just letting it all hang out. From that ultrasound, the only thing they really found that was an issue was a polyp um, by my tube, I think. I don't know where it was, but I had a polyp up there somewhere which can prevent getting pregnant. So when I started IVF, um, we started with all the shots. I'm pretty sure I did 10 days of shots. There were some days where I did two shots, some days where I did three. Um, and then after 10 days, we did the egg retrieval. The egg retrieval was like a surgery. Um, the surgery is pretty quick. I think it's like 30 minutes, but they knock you out and then they basically like take your eggs out. Um, and you're supposed to get, usually when you ovulate, you have one egg and that's how you get pregnant. But when you do IVF, you're creating a bunch of eggs at once and that's how you get super bloated. I got nine eggs and I remember coming out of surgery though and I was like out of it. And the doctor came in and he was like, you got nine eggs. He said it really quiet and I was like, what? Cause I'm like, I don't know if I'm high or if he just said nine eggs. Cause I was like, there's no way. And he said, <clears throat> nine eggs. And I was like, nine eggs? How? Like, how's it? He's like, I don't know. Basically, he just didn't know. I was very upset because from what I told about, when I was told about the process is that once you have your nine eggs or however many you have, naturally, some of them die. And it's just like, even if you're the most fertile person in the world, naturally, that's just what happens. So after the first day or so, I think they called me and said, um, out of the nine, you now have seven. So now I have seven eggs. And I was like, oh, great. So now um, they're gonna fertilize the eggs with Jacob's sperm. And so they did that. Out of the seven eggs that were fertilized, five turned into, um, five, five fertilized basically. And so now we just had to wait for them to grow and see which ones grew into embryos and which ones didn't. They called me after like five days or something, something like that. And they said, you have one that grew into an embryo. And I was like, no way. I was just so stressed and anxious, but they said, but you have two more that are still growing. So we're gonna give them a couple more days and see if they like make it to embryos or I think they call blast, blastocysts or something like that. The, the science term. And so luckily the two more grew. So then we had three total embryos, which was a lot better than one. And so then out of those three embryos, we decided to send them to genetic testing. And so they took a sample of each embryo, like the cells, and they sent it to a lab. And so they had the three embryos into a lab. We had to wait, oh my gosh, I don't even remember how long it was. It felt like forever, but I think it was either two or four weeks. I don't remember how long it was um, to get the results. And we were so nervous because we're like, well, we might have to do the entire thing over again. We don't have $30,000. So luckily they gave us the call that one embryo made it, which was like a sigh of relief, although we were hoping for more. So we had one embryo that made it um we turned that and we did that and did a transfer and we got pregnant and then at six weeks i thought i was miscarrying actually and i started bleeding out i felt sick i went to the er and luckily um <laughs> baby was still good they did an ultrasound and that was the first time we saw the heartbeat which is so cool because i was only six weeks along you can see a little heartbeat um and then i basically just had a subchronic hematoma i think is what they call it or hemorrhage with or something like that where basically like there's like a pool of blood kind of by the sack where the baby is in 
and so it can cause you to bleed, um, which usually has a higher chance of miscarrying if you have one of those. So they put me kind of on a bed rest. Luckily made it through the pregnancy, had a beautiful baby, Harlow. And so Harlow is my one little embryo I got. And so since we only ended up with one embryo, we have no other embryos to try to get pregnant with. So that's basically why we have to start the whole IVF process over, do all the little shots and do all that. And so, yeah, we're really excited to start. I don't even know how to feel. Like I feel nervous. I feel excited. Like, uh, our first consultation is August 1st and I'm going to California to do it. I'm completely switching fertility clinics because I feel like I had a lot of unanswered questions. I don't want to get too much into it because I want to answer you guys' questions because I had you guys submit questions and so I'm going to answer some of the questions you guys sent in. Okay, first question is, where are you doing IVF at? I am doing IVF at Coastal Fertility Center and that is in Irvine, California with Dr. Worland and I'm so excited. Um, how much is IVF at the place you are going to? So the cost for IVF is gonna vary for everyone. So I can't necessarily say because I don't know. Um, it all depends on your body, what treatment plan is best for you and what you're gonna need. Um, it also depends on what pharmacies you use for buying medication, if you're gonna do genetic testing, everything kind of factors into your overall cost. Um, I'm pretty sure my overall cost for Harlow was, um, 35 to 40,000, but I paid 10,000 of that because I had insurance at the time. How long did it take you to get pregnant last time from the first time starting IVF? So what I'm thinking this question is saying is from the start of beginning IVF to pregnancy, how long did that take? So I started IVF, um, well my first consult was in January, and then I started the actual IVF shots in February. And then I think I had results on my embryos by mid-March. And then we actually planned to do a transfer um, in April, but it was COVID and I didn't feel comfortable because I was right when COVID was exploding. So I waited to the end of May to get pregnant. Five months overall from start to finish, but it could have been four. So for me, it was a, basically a four month timeline. Does it hurt? Yes. The pain, the physical pain wasn't as much as I thought. I'm if I'm being honest. So I was at the beginning of IVF, like the shots you do in the stomach before retrieval. There are a few shots that are more painful. There's this drug called Men Menopur, Menopur. I don't know the exact name, but that one, once it's injected, it burns like crazy. So that one sucks. Um, all the other ones aren't bad. I mean, it doesn't feel good, but it's not like that bad. However, I will say the shots that I had to do for pregnancy, the progesterone and oil shots that I had to do to get prepared for pregnancy and then to keep the baby inside basically was one shot a day for 10 weeks and the needles were this long and it was going in like your butt slash hip area and those ones hurt really bad. The freaking oil inside, like you have to like massage it and I just would have clumps and lumps all over my butt and to this day, I have scar to like such bad scar tissue in that area. Like if Jacob like pushes at all, I'm like, stop, because it hurts so bad to this day. Does insurance cover IVF treatments? Um, some insurances will. It kind of depends on the company that you're either working with or your partner is working with. Some companies have amazing IVF coverage, some companies don't. Um, with Harlow, I worked for Goldman Sachs and they had an amazing fertility coverage. So it covered up to 30,000, but there are a lot of hidden costs, which is, wild with IVF, so be very careful. We only paid 10,000 out of pocket. So I think it was 5,000 extra on medication and 5,000 for genetic testing completely out of pocket. Also, the pharmacies are so shady. I don't even know how this is even legal, but a medication that would cost someone who would just pay out of pocket, like let's say I wanted to go get a fertility medication, it would cost me like $700. But if you go to this pharmacy and say, I have insurance to cover it though, like I don't need to pay out of pocket, they will charge your insurance $3,500 for the same medication, same dose, everything. And so I maxed out of my fertility benefit so quick. So I ended up still having to pay out of pocket for fertility medication because they scam the crap out of you. It's actually insane how this is legal. It's disgusting, honestly. Does IVF cause weight gain and mood changes? Yes, a hundred percent. Cause if you think about it, it's your hormones changing. Just like when you get your period, like maybe get a little moody. It's like that times five, I would say like, or times 10. 
like you definitely get moody or irritable you're under a lot of stress like you're definitely like nervous anxious about how it's gonna work out so no matter what you're already feeling that way and then add the hormones on top of it a hundred percent you're gonna be moody and then definitely gained weight i gained about 10 pounds doing ivf i would say and i didn't eat any differently i think it's just the hormones making your body like hold on to weight how are you feeling going into it good luck i am feeling like excited because i'm just ready to get it over with <laughs> i'm feeling definitely very nervous i am really just hoping for better results this time like ideally i'd love for us to have two embryos at the end of it that are healthy so that we can either have three kids or four kids but regardless like you never know if one of them is going to end in a miscarriage or if it doesn't even take and it's just not a successful transfer okay i also have the question that i'm getting a lot in here is why are you doing ivf and the simplest answer is because i got pregnant with hudson on accident but you have to keep in mind that's a completely different dad it's a completely different situation i am older now and some of these causes of us doing ivf are unknown um, after doing my first round of IVF, my doctor said I might have some unexplained infertility, um, as well as there's some things on Jacob's side and he's just not comfortable talking about it. And so I obviously am going to respect that. The why is we just have to do it. So yeah. And that is it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and asking questions. Hopefully I got to most questions. There are some that I probably missed. But if you guys have any extra questions, you can leave them in the comments. But make sure you follow along our journey. I'm going to be vlogging the entire thing. So it should be exciting. All the highs, all the lows. I want to document everything so that this could potentially help someone else going through IVF and kind of help them through the process. I know when I was going through it the first time, I was looking up every vlog, every blog, everything I could to kind of figure out what was going on with IVF. I just needed to know. So hopefully this can help you or anyone else you know, or if you're just genu genuinely curious to watch our journey and help us get to our next baby. So yeah, make sure you follow along, subscribe, and we love you.